Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Seabed. I could go wave the boat goodbye before making her way back to me. The dry wood of the pier creaking under each of their steps. I'd love to go swimming right away, but I think we should first find a place to leave our bags at. Oh, I thought they were going swimming. I mean fishing. I could go jerk their shoulders to fix the position of her bag. Good point. Um, I think it's that way. Where are they now? Agro pointed toward the wooded area opposite from the sea, made up mostly of fern and palm trees. There was a barely visible dirt road leading into it. There should be another wide beach beyond those and past the cape. Ooh, where are they going? Part of the veil of greenery to see the cape beyond it. I could hear the lively soul of the waves. The beach on the other side was expansive and covered entirely in white virgin sand, causing me to squint at the light reflected from it. A few light clouds languidly drifted along the sky. First of blue waves beat against the bright sand. Thought you over here. I followed Takako down the grassy hill. The sand rasped under the soles of my sandals. The beach on this side was shaped like a big croissant, sat surrounded by high reefs on one side and a forest on the other. The sea reflected both the blue of the sky and the green of the trees as it extended as far as the eye could see. Right in the middle, I noticed a roof. Belonged to a small wooden water cottage with a thatched roof in the middle of the sea connected to the shore by sturdy looking pier. It also had a flower bed of large red flowers to the side of its door. Huh. Opening the door, Taco stepped inside. Ooh, now that's a nice bed for, you know, those two together. The small room housed a double bed with a curtain, a couch, a table, a few chairs, and everything else to satisfy our furniture-related needs. All these look so nice, where are they? All the articles were in country style, giving the impression of dryness. I've never been to a water cottage before, did you book this? Remember Mr. Tokuda from the yacht? He lent it to us. Takago opened the fridge and inspected its contents as she replied. Thirsty? Yes. You okay with booze? Oh. Thing is not strong, otherwise water it down a bit, okay? I go threw her rucksack on the bed and, and came to my side with two glasses of beer in her hands. Here. After handing one of the glasses over, she gestured toward me with the other. Her glasses met with a cheery clink. Ah, ooh, what happened? I was resting on the sheet while, ta while watching Tago play around, doing a combination of cartwheels, backflips, and then a backward somersault. But her hand slipped on the last one and she landed on her bum. Hey, stop that, I don't need you hurting yourself. I gave her an, an indignant look as she came closer. Her silhouette blocked the bright sun putting me in her shadow. She had fairly impressive abs for her age. I'll go take a swim. Have fun! Up, oh, and off she went. She began running toward the sea, then stopped midway, came back. And sat down next to me on the sheet in the shade of the trees. Stand too hot. She was rubbing the soles of her feet, trying to cool them off. Need a pair of sandals? I gave the pair lying next to me a glance. I go consider the sandals for a moment, then shift her gaze to the sea. It won't matter once I reach the water. She stood up. I go take a swim. Have fun. Is that where she went before? Let's go swimming together later. Sure. Dash across the sand-covered beach toward the sea. How far away from the water are they? <gasps> Coconuts. I lay down on my sheet. The leaves of the palm tree above me were swaying in the wind. Actually giving a few glimpses of the blue sky beyond them, and then a coconut fell on my butt. Dachi! Looking in Takako's draw, uh, direction, I saw her trying to keep her balance among the green waves as she attempted to put the water goggles on her face. She appeared to be saying something, but the sound of the waves drowned it all out. Can't hear you! There are some really beautiful fish and corals in here. As I cocked my head, Takako shouted in a louder voice. Even he satisfied that I waved back at her, she put her goggles back on and dived down into the waves again. Oh man. I wish I was at a uh, 
at like the beach where the ocean was just this clear. As Sagaro disappeared with a splash, the sea returned to its prior calm state. A light tropical breeze disturbed the leaves and the water surface, carrying a pleasant kind of humidity and warmth. Ash. I absentmindedly, observe, I absentmindedly observed the somewhat boisterous calm of the tropical sea as Takago's face popped out of it, sending a spray of water into the sky. It was quite a distance away from where she had initially submerged. I caught it! Takago began walking toward me, her legs piercing through the underwater currents. She was carrying a large blue fish. There was this huge fish, angled it in front of me. How did you catch it? I want to see the fish. I was gazing at the distance as the shadow fell my face. It was Tago's fish. She'd been gone to explore the island that blocked my sun. Her hands reached out to me. It looks good on you. I touched my head to find a hibiscus brown on it. Found a cave down there. Want to go see? Gave me your hand and pulled me up. I think it'd be better if you put your sneakers on. As I was about to put on my sand-covered sandals, Tago placed my sneakers next to them. Are you trying to take me to someplace dangerous? Not really, but surrounded by cliffs and you might step on a shell along the way. In front of my sneakers while Tago picked up her thin beach coat. Wait, what's Tago wearing? This smells fishy to me. I just don't want to get bit by bugs. Hmm, how far is it anyway? About 20 minutes or so on foot, I think. I mean, they did say you can go around this entire island in less than an hour. Glanced down at her hand-drawn map. I leaned closer to inspect the collar of her coat and smelled the citrus-like fragrance of an anti-bug spray. Ooh, hidden cave. We trekked to the cliffs on the other side of the cave that we passed on our way to the beach, finding ourselves at what looked like a dead end surrounded by reefs. Is this really the correct way? If you go along that cliff, you should be able to pass along the sea, I think. Maybe it's got sunk by a high tide or something. Wait. Taco went toward the cliff she was pointing at earlier. He stepped on the neighboring patch of water and kept walking. Took a few careful steps before turning back to me. Ah. I think we can pass through this. I followed her, the soles of my sneakers splashing at our slightly submerged bridge. Soon enough, we found ourselves at an expansive area on the other side of the cliffs. It was a huge show, show beach. What's that? A long bridge of sand extended to the sea in an arc. I've never seen anything like this before. Should have brought my camera. Tago gazed into this distance. He then continued onwards, stepping on the slightly submerged sand as she scrutinized the map in her hands. The sound of the waves felt more distant than before, the splashes of water below our feet drowning it out. This clouds drifted along the sky, sluggishly and in a chaotic pattern. As I walked down, gazing at the emerald green sea, I suddenly felt like the waves on its surface were drawing closer and closer to us. Um, Takako? Yeah? A drop of cold water landed on my head. Before we knew it, a huge shadow covered the beach we were on. I glanced at the sky to see a massive storm cloud pass over above us. Uh-oh. Pit pat, pit pat, a few ripples extended across the surface of the sea, and in the next moment it seemed as though a waterfall had exploded above us. Let's go to the woods. The woods? The woods? I could go grab my hand and put me in land. Well, that sure came out of nowhere. I'm all drenched now. One of it's a squall. It feels like a typhoon. Left our things out in the open back on the beach. Yeah. Raindrops pattered against the leaves, giving the impression that someone was playing drums above our heads. Through the foliage above us, I could see a cloud sparkling in white as the sun rays pierced it. I could go squeezed. Sneezed. I'm freezing. Don't catch a cold in a place like this. As I leaned against a tree waiting for this to pass, Takago suddenly came close and pressed herself against me. It's warmer like this. Hey! Pressed her butts against mine. Fears, their softness through the swimsuit are warmth blending together. They had nowhere to escape with the tree trunk behind me. Takago began rubbing her body against me. Hmm. Kissed me on the mouth, still pressing against me. For a little bit, please. Might really catch a cold if I get any colder. I go smiled at me. Ah. Leaves suddenly rustled behind her and she turned around. Found something that looked a, like a big spider crawling a, along the ground, causing all my muscles tense up for a moment. Oh, it's just a coconut crab. 
As I looked closer, I realized it was just one of those crabs I'd already seen all over this island. Only until we find our way back, at least. I put Takago away. Is it your fault? Takago gave the patch of grass that the coconut crab had disappeared into an indignant glance. <laughs> Aww. I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. Well, it seems like uh, they were gonna have some fun, uh, fun times together, but it seems like the coconut crab uh, stopped the uh, fun times. If you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Bye.